turning through. Yeah, so I'll just say welcome to the Tara practice. Uh, we have a, a wonderful hour and a half, and I'm so grateful to Shanti Deva Center for hosting and the wonderful team there, and especially Sunny and Sheila, who have been in touch with me about the program. Thank you so much. And Jennifer and all those involved in Shanti Deva Center, thank you so much. So the Tara practice, I find, is an enormous way to lend support to yourself and those around you to find this connection with this female emanation of the omniscient consciousness or the Buddha or the Buddha mind. She's simply an aspect of the Buddha that tends to represent enlightened energy. So this particular green Tara that we're going to do this short practice tonight is um, there are 21 versions of Tara, but the green Tara is this very energetic um, way to shift negative circumstances to help transform. So she's kind of the one when we are um, seeking some support in our practices, when we're you know moving or getting a new job or major life events, it's really good to kind of call on that energy to help shift things. And I've had a longer experience with it. what happens is in in our practices we don't really see the deities directly most of us so we kind of feel like yeah i guess i guess this is working but i don't really have the evidence that i know that something's shifting so again what i would say with practice at, at most of our levels i certainly don't know the level that you're at i'm not clairvoyant but what's really helpful is if um we can um, try a practice and you and try something consistently for some time to just see what shows up in your life, what's happening. One example I have in my own life regarding Tara was the first time I went to Laudo, which is this remote retreat center near Mount Everest in Nepal. I'm hoping to get there in June to do some months retreat this year. And I do lead some pilgrimages there. And, so the first time I went, I was very nervous because it's very high and it's very cold and it was very, very primitive in those days. And Lama Zopa Rinpoche had told me kind of what he suggested I could do, what kind of practices and retreat. But um, I was in Dharamsala, India, and then he left and he said to me, if you have any questions, go see Kirti Sencha Rinpoche. It was another amazing being that lived in Dharamsala at the time. I went to see him and was asking some more specific things about the practice I was going to do. And, and then I told him I was a bit nervous to go and it was my first solo retreat. And, and I said, you know, I kind of humbly, I was like, please Rinpoche, could, could, could you say some prayers for me to clear obstacles? And um, some of you, a few of you, I know John remembers Kirti Center Rinpoche, a little four foot 11, like being with a million watts sw smile and he said, he said, of course, I'll pray for you. And he said, but you just pray to Tara and she'll take care of everything. And, um, and so I didn't really have much of a context of that. Of I, you know, I knew the Tara mantra, the basic mantra. And we had learned the Tara praises when I was at Tushita, our center there for the summer. And we were doing these all night Tara things to remove obstacles in general. So I had gotten some hit on memorizing the praises in Tibetan. And and so I, I was up at Laudo for about two months doing um, this retreat that involved water and I had to bring pipe up and the pipe kept breaking from the animals. It was, op it was kept opening up and I'd have to hike out and, and there was limited water. And so I just kept praying to Tara and doing these Tara praises every day and saying, please, please let me have water to finish this retreat. And, and then I, I did a couple of months of these water bowl offerings and some other practices. And then the day at, that I decided I finished the retreat, the next day the water finished, like just dried up from the spring. And, and I remember, you know, thinking like, whoa, that was different. And then when I was down in the kitchen at Laudo talking to Lama Zopa Rinpoche's sister, who's a nun that is still there, quite old now and living there. And she um, kept telling everybody, like she finished, her retreat and then the water finished. She finished and the water finished. So I started thinking, 
maybe that was a bit unusual and it just deepened my faith in Tara. So that's the kind of thing with our practice, we have to dip our toe in. And sometimes as some of you know, because some of you are great practitioners, you're dipping your whole foot in and you're realizing that uh, the water will carry you, that there is substance there and consistency and richness. So I wanna talk a little bit more about, and then we're gonna do the, the practice. Um, there's eight fears from which this green tar protects us, eight fears. And, and they, they have analogies for these fears. So for instance, it would say, she protects you from lions. Now we don't have lions roaming freely in our culture like that, but lions represent pride. So again, she has a way of protecting you from negative mind states and pride is one of the six root delusions. She protects from wild elephants. Once again, we're not living in India where there's wild elephants. What wild elephants represent um, are delusion and ignorance. Delusion and ignorance. So it would be great to be protected from that. Ignorance being one of the root, um, root delusions and one of the three poisons. She protects us from forest fires. So for people living in California, from people living in other parts of the world where fires are happening extensively, um, that can be an actual, you know, an actual thing that can be protected is you're evacuating, which I know that um, John has been part of communities that had to evacuate in California at times. And so again, um, living in a place like that, you could say Tara mantras as something like that's happening around you, things like that. But what forest fires represent is hatred. So another of the three poisons like that and another of those root delusions. She protects from snakes and we are in terrain at times where we encounter snakes. Okay, so once again, uh, and so it could protect you from snakes to call on Tara and what happens is what we want to think about. Let's make this practical in our everyday lives. Okay, you, you, you want to create a practice for yourself. So that's what arises naturally in your mind that that's what arises naturally in your mind like that. So meaning if the plane has a lot of turbulence on it, so I am still in a mode where I'm traveling a lot and I'm flying often, right? So the planes have turbulence and sometimes it has a lot of turbulence and people get scared and they start screaming and they start gripping their seats and, you know, crying. And, and again, none of that's going to help you with the turbulence. It won't make the turbulence stop. So I'd rather put my mind in a loftier space by thinking of my teacher, by thinking of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, one of my teachers, by thinking of the Buddha. And what I visualize sometimes when the plane has tremendous turbulence is um, the 21 Taras holding up the plane, you know, holding around the plane. We got you, girl. You know, they've got the plane like that. So I'd rather think of that and do my Tara mantras to keep my mind focused. And if something happens with the plane, that's where my mind is at the time. So if, if, I'm, if the plane will crash and I die, at least that's where my mind is. Less fear, less confusion. So just think about, again, in your everyday lives, these are the kind of things we want to call on. These are the kind of things we'd like to have accessible for us at our fingertips that arise naturally in the mind. It's so much, it's so much more helpful for you and for those around you to remind them. Here's another one is Tara protects from robbers, thieves. Okay, sometimes people's places are broken into. Could be your car is broken into, your business is broken into, okay? But robbers represent wrong view, wrong view. So in some way related to emptiness, to not having a direct perception of emptiness, but we have a lot of mistaken views about things. And then we have a mistaken view. How often has this happened to you? You believe in that view. You invest yourself in that view, which is actually inaccurate. And as long as you don't have a direct perception of emptiness, the nature of reality, the ultimate nature of reality, your view is always slightly inaccurate like that, but then we get invested in the wrong view and then we ruminate 
stories in our mind from there. Tar protects us from prisons. Now, for most of us, fortunately, I don't think prison is in our future. I certainly hope not. But prisons represent greed and miserliness. A greed and miserliness hold your mind in a certain prison, a very tight um, prison, lack of generosity like that. And we know people like that. Tar protects from floods. So floods is something that a lot of us experience in the world and floods represent desire and attachment. Again, one of the three, the third of the three poisons and another root delusion. The last thing she protects of the eight fears is demons. So we're not really used to experiencing demons or spirits, you could say negative spirits, but all that represents is delusion. And that is something that if you're an ordinary being, again, I don't you know your mind, if you're an ordinary being, that um, will be something your mind experiences, delusions, which simply means in a, in a synonym, afflictive emotions, or simply something that keeps your mind off balance, like confusion, anger, attachment, jealousy, pride, fear, anxiety, depression, all these things that we've mentioned. Excuse me, excuse me, um, Venerable Amy, what did yes. you say that snakes were representative of? So the snakes represent um, jealousy, jealousy. Thank Sorry, you. yeah, I may have missed that one. So jealousy, yeah, certainly an imbalance in the mind. That. So I'm just, can you make me a, um, a host, a co-host? That would be great. Thank you so much. So I have a short, um, not John, but I think you made John the co-host. <laughs> I have a short Tara practice that we are going to um, do, and then we're going to what we're going to do is to visualize the green Tara, emerald green goddess, and we're going to um, do some of that mantra while we do a certain visualization. But I thought it was helpful to um, just go over some of the things of Tara, you know, and I and I will say it's best. I try not to call on the on the deities just for mundane things like that. Um, you want your sports team to win, you know, like not the best thing to ask. But but, you know, I, I will admit that occasionally driving around Manhattan looking for a parking space, I have occasionally asked Tara for some help. So, but we do want to keep things a little loftier. If you have an obstacle in your practice, you're having a major uh, phys um, physical medical issue, uh, those are certainly good things. Uh, things like you're moving across the country, you're changing jobs, and you're interviewing for a job or something, traveling, it's certainly nice to, to and also to think about these beings, these aspects of the Buddha, actually being real and they are out there if you call upon them we just don't have the karma yet to see them directly but they really seem to help things and like my situation with the water at laudo i did feel something else i felt that ever since that something else is going on i can't see anything but it's deep in my faith that i do believe there are many many good forces out there supporting us as well as we are familiar with the negative things going on right in the world so instead of focusing overly focusing on those negative things let's add some of those positive beings out there because they are there as well like that so i will share my screen and uh, introduce you to this short tar practice what i'd like to do is first start <coughs> excuse me with our motivation and I'd like to just think about if you can bring to mind anyone you'd like to include in this practice for the next hour, hour and a half that really needs some support and needs some obstacles removed for their flourishing, for their good health, 
and for their peace of mind. It's perfectly okay to include yourself for this practice. If you need to have some obstacles to include yourself. And I would also like us to think about the larger things going on globally and especially Gaza, the situation there, the situation in Ukraine and Russia, the situation in Sudan and all the places around the world that are torn by conflict struggling with disease and starvation and all of these and all the beings that are living there if we can just bring them as much as we can into our heart And as we do these practices, I'd like you to visualize first in the space in front of you, it's a beautiful green Tara, like an emerald green goddess. I'm just going to do a little show and tell right now. I just received this Tara. Excuse me one sec. So on my road trip, I just drove across the United States, some of you know. And a friend of mine some years ago asked me to, um, with Rinpoche's main Tonka painter in Kathmandu, she wanted to get a green Tara. And um, she, so I, I went, she wasn't there with me, but I took some photos and she had this Tara. She bought this Tara, it was quite expensive because there's a lot of gold in it. And she had it on her wall for a long time. She's not a Buddhist. So when on the road trip, we went through New Mexico where she lives and she um did doesn't want it anymore if you can imagine she said i think it really needs to go to a practitioner so we drove with tara on the trip let me see if i I can see it do you have some sort of screen effect oh no you can't see it or is it just me sorry i can't see it there's a a screen no i don't have i'm trying to get it on the screen let me see if i can remove okay hang on one second i am going to see if i can change the here we go Let's try this. Okay. Yes. This is Tara. So she did the road trip with me. (laughs) There were some other Buddhas in the car as well. And uh, this is what I'd I'd love you to visualize in the space in front is this aspect of Tara. I just want to explain a little bit about her. So if you can see, she's got her left leg is drawn in right here. So she's not seated in a full lotus position, as we know the Buddha often is. The left leg is drawn in to show she has control over her sexual energy, but mainly desire and attachment. Her right leg is extended out right here, and it shows she's energetic. She's ready to jump up and serve all living beings. So this beautiful emerald green goddess You can see like that and she'll be here um, for during our practice. I have to figure out what I will do because she took the brocade off and um, it does she had it framed and so I have to figure out how to get it back on the wall and there's a white tar right there. That I came from Rinpoche's sister last summer just gave me that but i'll put these um, medicine Buddhas on for our talk rest of the talk. So if you can visualize Tara in the space in front. And then I just want to and then think about our larger motivation that the reason we're here tonight meeting is, is to help clear some of these obstacles on the planet. And we're not superheroes. But we can kind of be superheroes in our practices. In a sense, just through the visualization and um, we're not going to visualize ourselves as any Buddha, but thinking about, I find the Buddhas are the superheroes, are the real superheroes. So right now we're just asking for the Tara kind of super um, Shiro or heroine to join us and to remove obstacles and also mainly for our practices to help us go forward to enlightenment. 
The reason we want to do that is to be a Buddha, which is that fully enlightened state, so we can benefit all living beings perfectly. So can you take a moment, just think about your own motivation. If you'd like to align it with that Mahayana motivation, please do. And just set a good motivation right now for our time together and all the activities of the rest of your day. And then I've got the um, a few prayers we're going to do for Shanti Deva Center. I, I, if they're the same ones, I will just read a, a little bit and I'll share my screen because it's very good that Rinpoche had advised these for the center. Let's see where oh, there we go. Let's see if this will come up. So we're not going to do all these, but we will start with this praise to Shakyamuni Buddha. We'll read this three times. So you can think of the tar and the space in front, inseparable with Shakyamuni Buddha right now as we read this praise. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Shugata, knower of the world, Supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Shugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. To the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Shugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. So we're gonna read the Heart Sutra and any recollection you have of emptiness, please think about that as we read this. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time the Bhagawan was dwelling on Massa Vulture's Mountain in Rajgriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagawan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that in the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Aryavalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharadvati Putra, Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom 
should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors and consciousness are empty. Shariputra likewise, all phenomena are emptiness without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on, up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as truth since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared tayata gate gate paragate parasangate bodhi Soha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharadvati Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. So we're going to go to our tar practice. So this is a black and white drawing of the green Tara again, and you can see around her are the 21 Taras. So of those 21 Taras, uh, the white Tara I just mentioned is represents long life. So if you're doing a long life practice, that could be one of the long life practices you could do different than the green Tara I just described. They all look relatively the same, but some of them are wrathful looking. And you may see them in the photos all looking peaceful, but some of them you'll see fangs and things if you can actually see larger statues, sometimes they'll have it grander temples. And so when they're wrathful it's not that they're bad or that they're evil or they're trying to scare people they're basically trying to chase away uh, negativity, particularly delusions in the mind stream and things like that. And anything that creates delusions. so you see all the versions around and they're all different colors and they represent different things like that so it's nice at some point if you can study kind of just about the 20 and we will do the praises during this practice as well <clears throat> 
So these practices and practice booklets, which some of you are very familiar with, all begin basically with the same thing as refuge and bodhicitta. So they basically, we think about who will protect me from more suffering, and that's what refuge is also about, partially about. We, we have a lot of different coping mecha mechanisms when we struggle, and a lot of them don't ultimately really protect us from more suffering. They give us some temporary relief, but the suffering is still there. So if we really think about the qualities of Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, the three jewels, you can uh, thoroughly explore what can really help you um, turn away from the suffering and really transform your mind into something that doesn't suffer anymore. So let's begin with refuge. And this is nice how Rinpoche often includes um, this glance meditation on the Lam Rim or the graduated path so that our minds are also merged with that through these practices. Again, if you don't have a lot of time on your own, you can take certain verses out if you'd like, but it's all a really unique, thorough practice to do this way. Let's just think about refuge for a moment. The green tar you can imagine in the space in front. And just think about her representing an aspect of the omniscient mind or omniscient consciousness. So imagine if you had an all-knowing mind Based on everything you would know, you would no longer have any fear. You would have complete control over your mind. You'd be able to incredibly help beings. And if you're on the Mahayana path, that would be the whole nature of everything you'd be living. Is that something, feel in your heart if it's something worthy for you to take refuge in? And we can recite together. So feel free at any time you can join in. I take refuge in the Holy Guru, essence of all Buddhas, original grantor of all holy teachings and Lord of all supreme beings. Prayer for success in the, our Dharma practice. Please, Guru Buddhas, bestow on me the ability to unify my mind with the Dharma and be successful in practicing Dharma in order to achieve the graduated path. May no hindrances occur while achieving this path. And then we go through the different scopes um, of the Lam Rim. So just to refresh ourselves, please bless me to realize that I have received a perfect human rebirth, which is highly meaningful for many reasons, difficult to obtain, but perishable, transient and fragile, decaying in the shortest moment because of its changeable nature. Thus, my death is definite, but its actual time is most indefinite. And after death, I am far more likely to be reborn in the lower suffering realms. Having created infinitely more negative than positive karma in this life and all previous lives. Please bless me to comprehend how incredibly unendurable is the suffering of the lower realms that I might take refuge in Buddha, Dharma and Sangha with all my heart and realize the evolution of karma in all its profundity and that I might perform only virtuous actions and abandon all negative creations. So some of you are familiar with those Lam Rim topics of the lower scope that begin with precious human rebirth, death and impermanence, the situation is quickly passing away and we could end up in lower states of existence that would have so much more suffering so can I take refuge from there and enter the sacred gateway through which the teachings are practiced that will really protect me from more suffering and through that process understand the workings of karma and be able to avoid the 10 non-virtues and practice ethical behavior. Those are all those topics of that lower scope motivation. Continuing on the prayer of the practitioner of middling capability. By practicing in this way, I will be reborn in the upper realms, but will still have to experience unlimited samsaric suffering because of uncontrolled delusion and karma. Please bless me to realize fully the evolution of samsara from uncontrolled rebirth to death to rebirth and to follow day and night the three higher trainings of the path, higher conduct, higher concentration and higher wisdom, 
which are the main methods to release me from samsara. So again, middling capability topics include all the different types of suffering, but also traversing through knowing that there is um, in developing the, um, in having good ethics, and then on that developing good concentration, we can develop, understand emptiness, and all of that will cut the root of all of that suffering. And the highest capable motivation practitioners. Sutra path, but as each sentient being has been my mother, and as most of them are in extreme suffering, please bless me to bring success to all by renouncing the perfect happiness of self and practicing the bodhisattva's deeds of the six perfections with a bodhisattva's mind of exchanging self with others on the basis of equanimity meditation. Thus shall I have no sorrow in experiencing the samsaric suffering of all other sentient beings for no matter how long, having trained my mind in the general path. So this is talking about bodhicitta and the six perfections. The tantric path, the Vajrayana path. Please bless me to follow the quick Vajrayana teachings by feeling sentient beings suffering, very unimaginably unbearable for even the shortest moment as my own, and to achieve the attainment of Shakyamuni Buddha immediately at this very moment by keeping my ordinations and the instructions of the Guru with the best and highest care in life for the sole purpose of enlightening all sentient beings. So we are now going to bring Tara to our crown. So from the front generation, bring her to your crown and above your crown, visualize a lotus and moon disc. Because she sits on a multicolored open lotus flower that represents renunciation as it rises from the swamp unstained by the mud of the swamp. On top of that rests a white flat moon disc right on top, representing relative bodhicitta relative bodhicitta. Upon these is the great treasury of compassion, Arya Tara, mother of all enlightened beings, who is oneness with my kind root guru. So you can think of that if you have a root teacher. My guru is seated in the full lotus position. So you could just keep visualizing Tara over your crown, perfectly fine. She's, she's about six inches in height, facing the same direction as you. And just visualize as best as you can. The more you can visualize her in the nature of light, of emerald green light, wonderful. And she's draped in beautiful silks and adorned with beautiful jewels. So my guru is seated in the full lotus position within a transparent bubble of rainbow colored light, pink in complexion. So you could visualize this guru at Tara's heart if you like and wears saffron ro robes and a pandit's hat. His right hand is at his heart in the gesture of teaching the Dharma and holds a vajra and the stem of a white lotus that blooms beside his right ear, just like Tara. His left rests on his hip, it holds a bell and the stem of another white lotus that blooms beside his left ear. So here it's doing where at his heart is Arya Tara. So you can visualize either way or just visualize the Tara over the top of your crown. So visualize Arya Tara, female aspect, emerald green in color in the nature of light again, and seated in the dancing posture within this rainbow bubble. Again, her left leg is bent up, showing that control over her, over attachment and desire. Her right leg is outstretched as she is very active and ready to jump up to help all living beings. Her left hand is at her heart in the mudra symbolizing the triple gem and holding the stem of a blue upali flower. Her right hand extended over her right knee is in the mudra of granting sublime realizations. She's beautifully adorned with jeweled ornaments and scarves and at her three places bears the syllables Om, Ah, Hong. So if you see on the right of the screen, the top one is Om, and you could visualize a white Om that's in the center of her forehead. 
The next syllable is a red ah, and you could visualize that at her throat. The third syllable down is a blue hung, or H-U-M, home. You could visualize that blue at her heart. At her heart is a lotus and moon seed on which stands a radiant green syllable tom, and that's the fourth syllable down on the right. And imagine that rays of green light now radiate. So you can have the hung and the tom together at her heart. That's fine. But right now, visualize green light rays pouring out of that tom syllable in all directions. And they invoke all the enlightened beings. So all the blessings of those holy beings come from the 10 directions. And they pour back and are absorbed back into Aryatara's heart and that seed syllable becoming one, so it's fully energizing her over top the crown of your head. So here it says make a heartfelt prayer, and what I want to explain is um, it's very important in our practice, it's very helpful to make requests, and there's sections in some of the guru yoga practices, guru yoga, yoking myself to the virtuous friend you know, yoking myself to that enlightened being, that enlightened consciousness. That's what we want to do in our practices. We want to join with that. And so it's helpful. Now, here it gives often in, there's long requests that are often, um, you know, longer kind of more formal requests, but you can put the requests into your own words, what works for you. And here's a very simple request is, I'm asking Tara, please remain above my crown, above my head until I receive enlightenment. But we can also in our hearts pray for whomever you decided to bring into this practice this evening. We can pray for all those beings around the planet in the war zones, starving, fearful, like that. So take a moment and make whatever request right now you'd like to make. And then here come the standard prayers that often come in these practices, refuge and bodhicitta. We'll recite three times. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merit from giving in other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merit from giving in other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my merit from giving in other perfections, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. Seven limbs. With my body, speech, and mind, I devoutly prostrate. I offer all offerings, both real and imagined. All sins and offenses amassed from beginningless time, I confess. I rejoice in all virtuous actions of holy and ordinary beings. O gurus and Buddhas, please remain until samsara ends and turn the wheel of Dharma for sentient beings. All my virtues and those of all others I dedicate to the great enlightenment. Mandala offerings. So we offer a mandala like a world system this is very abbreviated of a world system, and we offer this to create the conditions for us to practice, to have no obstacles in our practice. Mandala offerings actually create prosperity for you. We often do them before teachings to request, to symbolize that when in the ancient days when people wanted one teaching, they would bring their most precious jewel. That's how precious the Dharma was. It wasn't prevalently taught. So people would bring their most precious jewel to get one line of Dharma like that. So it's all symbolic about that. And now there's Dharma everywhere teaching and people don't really understand, you know, the, the power of it and the rarity and how precious it is. So this is just symbolic of that. So we can read together. Some people will put their hands in the configuration of the mandala with their mala, their rosary, feel free. 
This ground anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this is a Buddha field and offer it. May all living beings enjoy this pure land. The objects of my attachment, aversion and ignorance, friends, enemies and strangers, my body, wealth and enjoyments. Without any sense of loss, I offer this collection. Please accept it with pleasure and bless me with freedom from the three poisons. Please visualize the most magnificent universe you can and imagine on every atom of that universe are infinite more universes. Yedam guru radna mandala kam nirata yami We make another request. Please bless me to purify all obscurations, non-virtues of my body so that it will become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra body. So imagine white light now emanates from the Om at Arya Tara's brow. So she's over top of your head. It curves around in an arc to enter my brow right here between my, my, my eyes. My, and imagine my body is purified completely of all obscurations and becomes one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra body. Now we'll purify speech. Please bless me to purify all obscurations of my speech so that it will become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra speech. From the red all at her throat, imagine red light rays emanate, curving around in an arc and they enter your throat Imagine your speech is completely purified of all obscurations from doing any of the non-virtuous speech conduct and becomes one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra speech. The next request, please bless me to purify all obscurations of my mind so that it will become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy Vajra mind. And imagine from her heart, from that blue hong, blue light emanates, curves around and enters your heart. And imagine that your mind is completely purified of all obscurations and becomes one in essence with Guru Tara's, Tara's holy Vajra mind. And now purifying subtle obscurations to omniscience. So we request, please bless me to purify all delusions and subtle obscurations to omniscience so that my body, speech, and mind will become one with Guru Tara's holy body, speech, and mind. So visualize three colored beams, the white, red, and blue coming from the Om, Ah, and Hong respectively. From her heart, from her brow, throat, and heart, curving in an arc, entering my three places, my brow, throat, and heart, completely purifying all my delusions and subtle obscurations to omniscience. Imagine my body, speech, and mind become one in essence with Guru Tara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind. And if you have, we're visualizing having a root guru, you can imagine that your root guru dissolves into Arya Tara, who melts into green light, which flows into me. Just think, instantly my wrong conception that I and all other phenomena are self-existent, together with my dualistic mind and its views, disappear, becoming completely empty, not even a trace of them remains. As best as you can, concentrate one pointedly in this empty state with the wisdom that is indistinguishably, indistinguishably one with Guru Tara's blissful, omniscient mind.
So most of these practices are key in remembering emptiness and having everything come from that wisdom. Like that we've kind of missed some of the practices if we're not thinking about that and trying to dissolve as best as we can any ordinary view like that. And then we want to do the practice from an extraordinary view like that. So for the next uh, session that I do, I won't take as long if unless there's a lot of new people, but we'll be coming into the practice more so we can do a little bit more meditation. Then out of that emptiness, my wisdom manifests instantly as Aryatara's holy body seated upon a lotus and moon cushion. So you, rather than arising as Aryatara, if you have not had highest yoga tantra initiation, best not to arise as Aryatara. You arise as yourself with the Tara coming from that wisdom on your crown like that. So you can imagine where it says, at my heart, if you're visualizing the tar in your crown, everything would be happening at her heart. There's another, so at her heart is another lotus and moon, upon which in the center stands the syllable tom, which is her seed syllable, green in color. And that is surrounded in a clockwise direction by the syllables of her mantra, om tare, tu tare, tu re, soha. So just visualize that at Tara's tiny heart around the edge of that moon disk and that those syllables om tare tu tare tu re soha if you'd like you could visualize them in this emerald green radiating light as they stand clockwise around the edge of the moon The Tom and the mantra are manifestations of Guru Tara's holy mind, with which my mind is totally united. So you can just visualize the Tara on your crown or just feel that oneness with her there on your on the crown. Green light radiates from all the letters of her mantra, spreading in every direction. So leaving her heart, spreading to the 10 directions, purifies all the negativities, gross delusions and subtle obscurations to omniscience of all sentient beings. And imagine all these beings now, all over the planet, become Tara. Again, light radiates, bearing manifold offerings to the six transcendental senses of all the Buddhas and sentient beings who have become Tara. The enlightened beings are extremely pleased and shower down the superlative qualities of Buddha Tara's holy body, holy speech, and holy mind. So the omniscient wisdom, supreme power, and infinite compassion in the form of a great shower of light rays just imagine them showering down now and coming down through the crown of your head as we recite Tara's mantra. So as best as you can keep this visualization going, feel this blessing and feel that this mantra is chasing out all the issues people are having around the world, all the problems you yourself are having, cleaning and purifying right? and granting you the energy to overcome these obstacles, granting you more energy for your practice, to counter delusion as it arises in your mind, all those things driving you to enlightenment. So first we're gonna chant some of the mantras, feel free to join in, and then we're gonna recite, and we're also going to recite on our own, keeping the visualization going, and then we'll do some tar praises after we dedicate and finish the visualization. So when you're reciting a mantra, most of you know this, but when you're reciting, this is a mantra that does need to actually leave your mouth. And because we're all in our own spaces and people are muted, um, it's not a problem. You can just recite out loud. It's much more powerful for you to recite out loud um, and especially a mantra like this. And you can recite at any pace you'd like to go. First, we'll do some chanting. 
Again, trying to keep this visualization the light rays dissolving into your crown, purifying your entire being like that. And if you have highest yoga tantra, obviously you'd have a slightly different visualization, which you can which you can do you're familiar with in tantra practices. Feel free to do that one as well. Om tare tu tare tu re soha. 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 Om tare. To tare to re so ha. Hang on, I'm going to stop the share for one moment because I just I forgot to um. Just want to bring in a little bit about the mantra. So, the essence means liberating from samsara, liberating from samsara. Um, Tare, Om is often the opener for holding everything in that holy space and opener to a lot of mantras. Tare shows that Mother Tara liberates living beings from samsara, from true suffering or problems. Tu Tare liberates you from fears. Um, Ture liberates you from disease. Disease. And so there's a lot of... um, different meanings, you know, I prostrate to Tar the liberator, you know, meaning basically liberate me and um, from samsara and things like that. So just to give you a, a rough idea of, um, of what we're chanting. And, and one thing I will say about the mantras is it's not so essential knowing each syllable, what it means. There's an inner resonance that starts to develop, especially over time as you're doing more and more recitation with the visualization. So we'll go back to the mantra. Om tare tu tare tu re soha. Om tare tu tare tu re soha. Om tare tu tare tu re soha. Om tare tu tare tu re soha 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 so we'll have about 10 minutes to recite and try to keep the visualization going
Om Dare Du Dare Du Re Soha We'll do a brief dedication and one longer at the end. So you can just keep tar there on your crown through the remainder of our practice and the tar praises. May I quickly become Guru Arya Tara Pagmadroma in Tibetan and lead each and every sentient being into her enlightened state because of these merits. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow. May that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. So this particular practice, you can easily download from the at fpmt.org org and go to the shop and you can find the short tar practice and I believe they're downloadable for free or for a small for an offering whatever you'd like to make and what I'd like to do is do these praises and it also includes the praises there's commentary also um, in the in the booklet so you can read about what Rinpoche says about this practice and how to do the practice best and the praises are very helpful which we often do at the center um, sometimes once a month during the Tara Puja, the four mandala offerings to Chittamani Tara that's slightly different than this practice, like that. And we're going to go to the praises, which um, are, again, another helpful thing for the planet when you're struggling. I do these praises every day, and I have a, a list of what I ask for for various people, for help that different people need. And and I recite the list and ask Tara as if she's a really dear friend sitting in front of me and ask her to please help in kind of more elaborate Tara practice that sometimes I do. And these praises are things we can also do for situations on the planet, situations with your loved ones that people are going through. So there's many things we can do in, in addition, Tonglin meditation is another really helpful one you can do for people struggling around the planet when you hear terrible stories in the news and things like that taking you know imagine you're taking on the suffering of those beings and then offering them happiness as you're breathing in exhaling out mounted on the breath like that so let's do these one time through in english the praises to the 21 taras O oh, my prostrate to the noble transcendent liberator. You can imagine you've got Tara on your crown, but imagine her surrounded by those 21 Tars that we saw in the black and white photo at the beginning of this practice. All of the power babes are there, right? So there's a verse for each one, four line verse for each one. O oh, my prostrate to the noble transcendent liberator. Homage Tara, swift heroic, eyes like lightning instantaneous, sprung from opening stamens of the Lord of three worlds, tear-born lotus. Homage you whose face combines a hundred autumn moons at fullest, blazing with light rays resplendent as a thousand star collection. Homage golden blue one lotus, water born and hand adorn it, giving effort come austerities, patience meditation her sphere. Homage crown of Tathagatas, actions triumph without limit, relied on by conquerors children, having reached every perfection. Homage filling with tutare, whom desire direction and space, trampling with her feet the seven worlds, able to draw forth all beings. Homage worship by the All Lord, Chakra Agni Brahma Marut, honor by the host of spirits, corpse raisers, Gandharvas, Yakshas. Homage with her trait and paid sounds, destroying foes magic diagrams, her feet pressing left out right in, blazing in a raging fire blade. Homage to a very dreadful, destroyer of Mars champion, she with frowning lotus visage, who is slayer of all enemies. Homage at the heart her fingers, adorn her with three jewel mudra, light ray masses all excited, all directions wheels adorn her. Homage she so joyous radiant, crown emitting garlands of light, mirthful laughing with Tutara, subjugating Mara's devas. Homage she able to summon, all earth guardians assembly, shaking frowning with her hong sign, saving from every misfortune. Homage crown adorned with crescent, moon all ornaments most shining, Amitabha in her hair knot, sending out much light eternal. 
Hum it she mid wreath ablaze like eon ending fire abide. Red trend left and joy surrounds you, troops of enemies destroying. Hum it she who strikes the ground with her palm and with her foot beats, scowling with the letter hong, the seven level she does conk. Hum it happy, virtuous, peaceful, she whose field is peace nirvana. She endowed with omen soha, destroyer of the great evil. Homage she with joy surrounded, tearing foes' bodies asunder. Frees with tongue and knowledge mantra, arrangement of the ten letters. Homage to re with seed letter, of the shape of syllable. Hung. By foot stamping shakes the three worlds, may Romanda, Yar, and Vindya. Homage holding in her hand the hair marked moon of Deva Lake form, with twice spoken Tara and Pay, totally dispelling poison. Hamid, she whom gods and their kings and the Kinaras do honor, armored in all joyful splendor, she dispels bad dreams and conflicts. Hamid, she used two eyes bright with radiance of sun and full moon, with twice Hara and Tutare, she dispels severe contagion. Hamid, full of liberating power by the set of three natures, destroys hosts of spirits, yakshas, and raise corpses supreme to re. These praises with the rude mantras and prostrations thus are twenty one. Om Tare tu Tare tu Re Soha. Om Tare tu Tare tu Re Soha. Om Tare tu Tare tu Re Soha. And there's a longer version of the of the praises and many lovely drawings of Tara in this booklet. And I was just seeing, and that is the end. Okay, so I wanted I'd like to do some longer dedication verses. And I also just want to stop for a moment and ask if you have any questions regarding the practice. <clears throat> And also, like I said, um, if you're joining again next week, um, we'll have a little bit, what I'd like to do is have a little bit more time for the visualization, the meditation, and getting, you know, for those of you that aren't so used to counting mantras, this way we can count and have 15 or 20 minutes like that, um, depending on how many new people show up like that. But this oh, way, question. nice, really practice. Yes. Um, I do a, a little different version usually of the, of the tarde. Om tare tu tare tu re mama e yor Unes pajana pushtim kuru soha It doesn't matter if I do that one. So that's, a, like that's that the one. white Tara. That's the white Tara mantra. Oh, that's white Tara. So that's I a see. different Tara. Yeah. So if you're uh, doing okay. white Tara, Tara, which is a long life practice, um, that's the mantra you'd want to do, but this one we're doing the green Tara mantra. That's the green Tara. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So each Tara has its own, has a different mantra okay. as well. Okay. Like that. Everybody okay? Any other questions? Okay. So we're going to go to some longer dedication prayers. I'm going to share my screen. And I really want to thank everyone for participating. It's really nice when, you know, I almost thought I was, I had this feeling, I was like, oh, we should do this every week. You know, it's a really nice feeling. And, and the thing is, it doesn't really have, you can, in an hour, you can, you know, once you know the practice and you, you just come in, you've got your refuge bodhicitta, you go through the prayers, and then you're reciting like a half an hour of the mantras and you, you feel like it's making, you know, for each of us has our own, a lot of us have our own practices that we are reciting a number of practices and a number of mantras and things. Some of you are newer, no problem, but this way um, it creates this nice energy you'll notice over time. And then eventually you can do a Tara retreat and you could spend 10 days doing the green Tara mantra and you could spend time accumulating 100,000 mantras, which is a certain kind of milestone and you could do more and things like that. So it's very nice because it helps you create a closer connection with that aspect of the enlightened consciousness. So that's why we do these retreats and these practices. So let me just find um, the dedication prayers I wanted to do. Thank you.
And these are just some special um, different dedications that Rinpoche has. You know, it's nice to have different ones to do. So I'm going to share these and. Uh, Let me see if I can, can't seem to get it expanded. Okay, there we go. So taking whatever positive energy we have created, whatever merit we have created. Um, oh, I see there's some things in the chat. Sorry, I wasn't reading the things. There's some things in the chat. Okay, your first time learning about the mantra, wonderful. Um, you can recite the mantra, um, Patricia, as slowly as you like. So until you learn it, Om Tare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha, you can go as slow as you like. What you will find over time with any mantra and anything we learn, it takes time and then it will start to speed up. But again, you can recite as slow. If you meant that the tar praises are fast, they they do have an energetic beat to them. Normally, it, it's the, normally the way they're recited, but again, you can recite them as slowly as you like, but I know sometimes with a group, um, due to time constraints, they'll they'll go a little faster. Um, you could recite a hundred thousand of the mantra. Um, so I would read first the commentary in the booklet that I just mentioned that you can find at the fpmt.org shop online, and you can also look online and find other commentaries for the Tara practice. If if it's Chittamani Tara, I will mention if it's Chittamani Tara which is spelled C-I-T-T. -T. If it's that kind of Tara practice, it's highest yoga tantra. And really to do that full on retreat, you need the initiation into that to do it. So it's kind of different than just taking a green Tara and doing that Tara mantra with the crown of your head. So you want to understand, you know, what you're, which one you want to do and what you've been told to do. And then you could get the initiation for that, which makes it stronger and some of the tantric retreats where we really are not allowed to do the retreat without getting the initiation first. So do make sure you understand exactly what you've been told to do and what version of that Tara to do. And then you can get everything prepared like that, if that's helpful. So I just wanted to mention that. So I'd like to invest whatever positive energy we've created from this wonderful practice. May we, um, invest this and dedicate ourselves um, to um, helping all those beings around the world be removed, to be completely free of all the suffering they're going through and to have all obscurations removed from our developing rich, consistent practices, from having anything that's challenging us in life to be removed and all our loved ones as well if any obstacles they're encountering, may they be free of those immediately. May Tara help to subdue all of those obstacles and especially delusion in our minds and in the minds of all beings like that. And especially in the minds of all the leaders of all the countries around the world and for everything um, to go smoothly in our countries like that, to have the right leadership, more enlightened leadership and things like that for the benefit of all and for us to get enlightened for the benefit of all living beings. So we'll read some of these dedications. May bodhicitta grow and grow in the hearts of all. Due to all the past, present and future merits collected by me, the three time merits collected by numberless sentient beings and Buddhas, may bodhicitta be actualized in one's own heart, in the hearts of one's family members, in the hearts of all the students in this organization, in the hearts of all the sponsors and benefactors, in the hearts of everybody who has offered service to the organization in the past, who is offering now, and whoever will offer in the future. May Bodhicitta be actualized in the hearts of those who rely upon me, and that means Rinpoche, whom I promise to pray for, whose names have been given to me, in the hearts especially of all the people who came to the center in the past, who are coming now, who will be coming in the future, in the hearts of all the organizers, the people have served as directors various times since the center started. May Bodhicitta be actualized in one's own heart and in the hearts of all these sentient beings without the delay of even a second. And in whose hearts Bodhicitta is generated, may it increase. And due to all the past, present, and future merits collected by me and all the three-time merits collected by numberless sentient beings and Buddhas, 
May bodhicitta be actualized in the hearts of all the leaders of the world, especially leaders in mainland China, leaders of the world whose countries, due to a lack of compassion and good heart, suffer so much, where there are so many problems, torture, no freedom. May bodhicitta be generated in their hearts. Due to all the past, present, and future merits collected by me and all the three-time merits collected by others, may bodhicitta be actualized in the hearts of all people who follow the different religions so that the world will be filled with perfect peace and happiness and everyone's actions, whatever they do, will become only the cause of benefiting each other, not harming, only the cause of happiness for all sentient beings and only the cause of enlightenment. And we are gonna go back to um, the final dedication prayers from Shanti Davis Center for the long life prayers for His Holiness. And then we're gonna do the swift return prayers for Lama Zopa Rinpoche's return. And I'll share my screen again. First Holiness the Dalai Lama, the wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, to the incomparably kind Tenzin Gyatso I beseech, may all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful Chenresik Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. And lastly, um, I think I have this prayer. Let me just double check. Um, Rinpoche Swift re Return. I have several different versions of it. Okay, we'll do this one. This is the old one. Yeah, let me get rid of that one. Um, I have the latest one handy. If someone wants to make me co-host, I can screen share. Great, that would be great. Thank you. So really praying for Lama Zobar Mishay to return to us as soon as possible. I can't believe next month we're coming up on the one year anniversary. It's hard to believe it went so fast. Thank you, Jennifer. Peerless teacher and assembly of the children of the victorious ones, Shravakas and Pratyeka Buddhas, victorious Losang father and sons, along with the lineage masters, all the objects of refuge of infinite lands, please bestow the virtue and goodness of accomplishing this prayer here and now. Holding and spreading the Muni's precious and complete teachings through explanation and practice, you wore the armor of patience that is never discouraged. Incomparable Venerable Guru, to you I make requests. While striving single pointedly for the sake of the victorious one's teachings, the sole gateway through which all benefit and happiness emerge, and for mother living beings, you suddenly departed to peace. What a great loss. Nevertheless, through the undeceiving truth of the blessings of the ocean of the three jewels, and the great waves of bodhicitta of the children of the victorious ones, may the smile of a reincarnation swiftly beam in glory for fortunate disciples. Thank you all so much. I wanna thank Sunny. Thank you so much for hosting. Um, thank you Shanti Davis Center. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of you in April for um, His Holy, His Eminence, Ling Rinpoche. And it's wonderful to see some of you again. And I wish you all the best. If you want to keep in touch with me, um, there's the chat. I think some of you are um, have my, my um, contact info. I just ask if you do write, please make it 
some brief briefly i'm a little bit busy right now and i um will be in retreat from the end of june uh to the end of october so i won't be in contact at all during that time so wonderful to see all of you and um please be well thank you venerable Thank you, Venerable. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you, Shanti Davis. Thank you, Venerable. Tashi Delek. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Venerable, so much.